Wolves were the first animal with which humans formed a mutualistic relationship, eventually giving rise to dogs. Although there is little consensus regarding when, where and how many times domestication took place, the archaeological record attests to a long-term and close relationship with humans. The paper Origins and Genetic Legacy of Prehistoric Dogs in Science studies this. In this paper, they sequenced 27 ancient dog genomes up to 11,000 years old from Europe, the Near East and Siberia. They find an east-west axis of dog ancestry, in which the western extreme comprises of modern and ancient western Eurasian dogs and modern African dogs. The eastern extreme is represented by pre-contact North American dogs and modern East Asian dogs, including New Guinea singing dogs and Australian dingoes. They modeled the genetic history underlying the dog population structure for five populations that represent major ancestries and find that the phylogenetic structure implies that all five ancestor lineages Neolithic Levant, Mesolithic Karelia, Mesolithic Baikal, Ancient America and New Guinea singing dog must have existed by 11,000 years ago, the radiocarbon date of their oldest sample, the Karelian dog, and thus most likely existed prior to the transition from the Pleistocene to the Holocene epoch about 12,000 years ago. They also looked into the relationship between dogs and wolves and found no detectable evidence for multiple dog origins or extensive gene flow from wild canids, wolves, past gene flow from wolves into specific dog populations would have manifested as an affinity to any member of the modern grey wolf lineage, but that doesn't seem to have happened to an any detectable extent. This result is consistent with the scenario in which all dogs derive from a single ancient, now extinct, wolf population, or possibly multiple closely related wolf populations. In contrast to the lack of wolf admixture into dogs, they identified dog admixture in almost all analyzed present-day wolves. Furthermore, they looked on the relationship between dogs and human population histories. There is, a, there is a correlation between dog and human genomes in time and space, but there are also significant deviations like in Calcolithic Iran, in which the human population is different from the Neolithic Levant, but the dogs in the two regions are similar. Similarly, in Neolithic Germany and Ireland, the humans are more shifted towards the Levant, but the dogs are shifted toward a northern European hunter-gatherer context. The expansion of steppe pastoralists associated with the Yamnaya and Corded Ware cultures into late Neolithic and Bronze Age Europe transformed the ancestry of human population. They are unable to detect a similar transformation of dog ancestry in Europe though. So despite this potential link between the steppe and the corded ware dog, most late European dogs display no particular affinity to the Tsribnaya proposed Jamnaya dog. Modern European dogs instead cluster with the Neolithic dogs. Steppe pastoralists, however, also expanded east, where they do not appear to have contributed much ancestry to present-day peoples in East Asia. Their dogs, by contrast, seem to have done so. Many modern Chinese dogs display unambiguous evidence of being the product of a mixture between population related to the New Guinean singing dog and the Australian dingo and a West Eurasian related population. Some populations, especially those in Siberia, additionally require a fourth source related to the 7,000 years old Lake by Carl Dog, but no or minimal New Guinea singing dog related ancestry. As a side note, the increased copy number of AMY2B gene, which is involved in starch di digestion, has been linked to a dietary adaptations of dog during the 
cultural transition. However, it seems that the selection for increased AMY2B copy numbers did not take place during the early stages of domestication, and in contrast to humans, it was not advanced in Mesolithic hunter-gatherer contexts either, and did not become widespread until several thousand years after the first appearance of starch-rich agricultural lifestyles. This paper finishes with the note Ultimately, integrating DNA from dogs and wolves, even older than those analyzed here with archaeology, anthropology and ethology and other disciplines, is needed to determine where and in which environment and cultural context the first dogs originated. And that question still very much is open. Thank you for listening. Till next time, I wish you all the best.